Hey everybody, this is Matt. I'm back again this time for the second video in the series on Ruby modules. Uh, before I get started though, I want to say thank you to everybody that subscribed to my channel. Um, I have a special thanks really for Matt Slay who ended up posting um, the video, I mean just like a blurb on RubyFlow about the video channel that I've got going. and. Uh, so definitely I'm glad that more people will be seeing the videos and I really you know I hope I can up the code quality or excuse me the casting quality to to be a little bit better and more professional I know someone did mention that there's you know there's more ums and ahs and stuff like that than there should be and uh, I think he's definitely right about that so I'm gonna try to improve that so uh, and there's definitely gonna be a lot more videos coming I've got a little bit more free time now Okay, so, and that's pretty much the last of the updates that I have. I'm also going to be putting the videos in the playlist soon. And uh, definitely feel free to contact me on Twitter and, like, request a topic. Definitely anything people are interested in, um, love to tackle. Okay, so where we left off last time was talking about how modules can be useful for uh, adding functionality to a class right so you don't want to have everything necessarily um, in just one class and use a rigid inheritance and structure inheritance structure like people do in Java you want to be able to use it in multiple classes and that's one of the things that Ruby modules allow you to do that being said one of the other things it allows you to do and I think in my opinion it's maybe the more important of the two it is is, is the fact that it allows you to break out your domain logic so that it's not all crowding the same exact I guess I mean you don't have all those same methods in the same object in class the, so that's what I'm going to kind of demonstrate here with just one class called loan and I'll, I'll show you like what I typically run into on a daily basis you know some of the classes that I've seen are, are three or four hundred lines long and you've got methods for all sorts of things you know caching layer things or um, windows of when things are valid things like that and it's really tough when all that stuff is in one class so a good solution is to break those things out into their own modules and so I'm gonna demonstrate exactly how all that works here with a very boring loan example but hopefully it kinda makes the point so and also keep in mind you can get all this code off of github the link is in the description okay so let's get into it so we have this class loan and it's got this attribute accessor balance owed maturity months you know a loan obviously has a length till it becomes completely uh, you know paid off and so that's what that maturity month is I, I mean normally it's years or I guess however banks calculate it but I'm just doing months because it's simple interest rate is obviously the rate of interest that you're paying on that loan in this case we're going to use a monthly rate so it's calculated down to the month which I think in this case is like 1%, but we'll get to that. So the first method, method we have here is called owed by month. Its purpose is just to calculate how much you owe and how long is left on the loan. So that's pretty straightforward, right? The second one is print balance. So this is just giving like a friendly human readable. Your balance is balance owed. Pretty straightforward there too. Uh, the third one is years left to maturity, which basically will tell you how many years you've got left until this thing is mature, based on, you know, we're just taking how many months we have, divide that by 12. Also, very straightforward. Uh, fourth, we've got print estimated cost per day, which just gives you, again, a friendly little message saying, okay, on average, you know, you're owed by month divided by 30 you know your cost comes out to X number of dollars per day so you can you know you ever see those ads where they're like oh you know for the for the price of a cup of coffee a day you could get X Y or Z well that's sort of what this is and lastly we've got the cost of interest so and this is also you know calculated well this one is actually calculated on a monthly basis so this is what our cost of our interest is so, all right, so if you look at these methods, what, is in, what, what do we see in common here? We've got some methods that are for printing, like print balance and print estimated cost per day, 
And we've got other methods in here like cost of interest, years left to maturity, and owed by month. Okay, just keep that in mind as we go forward. So I'm going to run through this example, then we're going to talk about that a little bit more. Okay, so what we do, we come down, we create this loan object, we set the balance owed, we set the maturity months, and we set the interest rate to 1%. So we owe ten. Uh, excuse me. We owe two thousand dollars over ten months, and the interest that we pay per month is one percent. So, which is like, I guess a little bit more than twelve percent a year. But okay. So look, now we're just going to print out all these things, all these methods that we have, and I separated them here: owed by month, years left to maturity, cost of interest, and then we'll print the balance and estimated cost per day. So come over here to the Ruby, well it's not Ruby console, just a regular console and say modules.rb and we get output, right? So the first thing is go, you know, let's go back here so you can see it. The first thing is owed by month, so it's obviously a 10 month deal and we owe $200 per month. Um, years left to maturity is the second one which is zero dollars because it's less than a year at this point and our cost per interest per month is two dollars so then we just obviously print out whoopsie um, we print out the balance is two thousand and the cost per day of our loan is six bucks okay all that stuff's not all that interesting but getting back to our code and looking at it so we talked about exactly how okay we've got these things and they're definitely different and what you'll notice in classes is that as that class expands and gets larger and larger you start to get lots of different functionality all meshed into the same class which is really well it makes it really tough because I mean in this case look these methods are related print balance and print estimated cost per day but they're not even next to each other so I mean you can do the easy thing and put them next to each other and you know then go take cost of interest and move it up but and there's nothing wrong with that especially when the class is small but when you get into larger classes it's really hard to have all that logic in one class and to be honest it shouldn't really be there so the the right solution is to go and I'm just gonna undo this and save but the right solution is to break all this out into modules and this next this next example shows us how so we've, I've broken it out into two modules. One is called Loan Calculations, which has the actual business logic of how the loans are calculated. Same methods, nothing's really changed there. And then the other module is called Loan Printing, which just does, obviously, all the things related to printing out things for our loan. And so now, when we take this class of loan and we add these two modules in, well, now our base class is a lot cleaner, right? and when we need to look up certain logic it's pretty clear where that stuff's gonna be obviously loan printing stuff will be in loan printing and loan calculations will be in loan calculations it, it's very straightforward and so this is like really uh, I think one of the most important refactoring things as you go along with the the Ruby projects that you have you'll end up seeing this stuff bleed into the project there's really no way around it unless you're extremely diligent but in projects with multiple people and a lot that needs to get done there's just technical debt that accrues and so doing you know refactors in rails and other Ruby projects this is I think in my opinion it's one of the most important things to look for because it makes things a lot easier I, I can't tell you how much time I've spent over the years you know searching just in one file back and forth wait I gotta go to the top wait now back to the bottom for things that are all related so keep this in mind uh, and you know let me know what your experience has been but I think that you'll find if you start breaking things out like this it'll be a lot easier now keep in mind like in our base class here you know all we do is have our two modules and our attribute accessors and in this case you know you don't have like a, a super compelling reason because there's only five classes or excuse me there's only five methods but when you've got like 50 methods in a class which is not really uncommon I've seen some like train wreck rails projects in the pat and yeah I mean just over the years where 
they've thrown everything in the kitchen sink in there and it takes a long time to get up to speed whereas if they have everything in a you know in a module it makes things a lot simpler so as you can see like we still have our attribute accessors here and we're doing the exact same things as far as printing out values so we'll go back here and then we'll call modules 2.rb and as you can see everything's the same business logic hasn't changed just the location of it so that's that's the second thing to to work with for ruby modules and i think next we're going to deal with namespacing in general and how you can have modules within modules and again why you would do that and little tricks like that and i think like total we're going to have about five videos in the series and you know we'll get into the different things you can do in modules and how you can add class methods and things like that so that's it for now and stay tuned definitely give me some feedback though I'd like to know what you guys think or what needs to be improved and all that sort of thing okay guys take care that's it